These are seven powerful tips for organizing your repeat Teams meeting notes using Microsoft Loop. So let's nerd out. So from our Teams calendar, we will select a date and time for our first meeting instance, and then we will give our meeting a title. Next, we will add required attendees. So I'm going to add Mike. And if there's anybody that you want to optionally attend these meetings, then we can expand the optional. Next, we have the repeat occurrence. So here we could do every weekday, for example, Monday to Friday. We could do daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, or even custom. So I'm going to do a weekly occurrence. And now we have some additional options. So if we wanted this to repeat every other week, for example, then we could update this to two, but I'm quite happy to keep it as one. There's also an option here to add an end date. And if you are working on a project that had a defined end date, then we can add that here. Otherwise, we can just go and save. Next, we have a channel. Now, in another video, I suggested adding a channel to your team's meetings. But for these recurring meetings, at the time of recording the video, we do not want to add a channel here. It means that we won't be able to complete the next steps. This might be changing in the near future, and I will be sure to update you if that does happen. So these are the main items that I recommend adding, but you might also want to add a location, some meeting details. You might want to define who can bypass the lobby, as well as the record and transcribe automatically. I like to keep this toggled on as I have a 365 Copilot license. Copilot can actually generate meeting notes as well as suggested follow up tasks. So now we are ready to add an agenda. So down in our meeting agenda, we will see that these meeting notes have inherited the name of our meeting, which is the weekly project review. And now I want to draw your attention to this next section, which says that you're viewing meeting notes for this series. So with repeat meetings, we have occurrences, which are the meetings that happen on specific dates. And then we have the series, which is looking at that recurring meeting as a whole. So right now, since we are looking at the notes for this series, this is going to basically turn into a template for this recurring meeting. So now we can add an agenda and you'll see it's topic, comma, and then at sign name and time allotted. So what I always recommend doing for these repeat meetings is adding an item that says previous meeting review. So this is going to prompt you to review any of those outstanding tasks discussed in the previous meeting. Then we can add a comma, then to tag a team member to host this portion of the agenda, we will press the at sign and I'm going to add Mike. Now with these loop components or pages, we need to select this little red icon on their name to grant them access to this loop page. So here we will share and notify and Mike will now receive an email that we have mentioned him in these meeting notes. We will add a couple of other items. So now that my agenda is in there, we can go and send this meeting invite. So we can see that our meeting is now in our team's calendar. And if we expand this meeting, then we can just expand it again. If we scroll on down, we're going to see that you are reviewing the meeting notes for this occurrence. So now we can see that template has pre-populated there, but any changes that we make to these meeting notes are specific to this meeting held on this date. So for example, we'll close out of here. We'll go to our meeting next week, open it up, expand the details. And if we scroll on down, similarly, we'll see this occurrence. And next week, I want to discuss our spring product launch. So I will tag myself and we can allot 15 minutes for that portion. So this is how we can update our specific meeting occurrences. And a final little note here as well, we can see that this has the meeting series name, so weekly project review, and then it's followed by the date. So all of these meeting notes now have that format for the title of the loop page.
All right, so it looks like we are running late for this meeting. So let's join this meeting. So here we are in our meeting and we can see this agenda on the right hand side. Now there is one document that I want to share with Mike. Just go attach a file and we're going to add that SWOT analysis. I'm hoping that Mike can provide me with some feedback on that. Now going back to these meeting notes, I always like to open these up in the browser. I feel like it just gives you a little bit extra space. I'm just going to close out of here. So once again, we'll see that we are in this occurrence of the weekly project review meeting series. And as we work through this meeting, we can start to tick through these agenda items. Now for these meeting notes, you can take your meeting notes here, or if somebody on your team has a 365 Copilot license, then AI can automatically generate some meeting notes for you. I will briefly show you that in a little bit. Next, we have these follow up tasks. Now, one task that I always recommend adding is a final meeting review, and this will prompt you to just tie up any loose ends of this meeting. So I'm going to assign this one to Mike. We can also allocate a due date. So this will show up in Mike's planner. So now that this meeting is done, let's take a look at how we can organize these meeting notes in Microsoft Loop. Now we are on to the good stuff. And I wanted to note that for this next step, only the team's meeting organizer will have access to this. So let's expand this meeting. We will open it up and we will go to the chat area. From here, we are looking for this open and loop workspace. And now we can assign a dedicated workspace for our meeting. We will notice that the name of the workspace as well as the members have automatically been added, but we can update the cover. So we have a dog apparel company. So this one is pretty fitting. I will update that and then we can add an icon. So we will add some little pots. Now, if your organization uses sensitivity labels, then I would also recommend updating this accordingly. Otherwise, we can continue. On this next area, we can add a description. So you could add some additional details about this meeting and the workspace. And I would also recommend keeping this post to chat about this workspace toggled on. On the right hand side, we have some shared meeting content. So we'll see that there is that SWOT analysis. And then we also have the meeting recording that has pulled through. We have these two documents here and they look quite similar. But if we change this to a list view, then we will notice that this one here has the date. So that is going to be those meeting notes for that specific occurrence. And then here we just have the meeting notes for the series, which is that template that we have created. I would recommend adding all of these items to your workspace. So now let's go and create. And here is our workspace. Now there are a couple of ways that we can customize this. So if we select loop on the top left, then we will see all of our workspaces and we will see that this new one has been added. If we select the ellipses, then we have some additional options. And one thing that I would recommend doing since this is a recurring meeting is to add it to your favorites. So we will see that this is now going to pop up on the left navigation for easy access. Additionally, we can rename and style our workspace. I would recommend keeping the title the same so that it always matches the name in Microsoft Teams for that meeting series as well. We can update the cover as well as the icon here. Additionally, we can update those sensitivity labels and members or delete the workspace. So to get back to the workspace, we can simply select it. And now we can start to organize our meeting notes. So we can see all of those documents have been added to the workspace and we've got that specific meeting occurrence. Now, when we hover over it, you'll actually see the full name of that loop page. So you can see the date of that meeting. We have that shared document. So anytime that documents are shared in future meetings, these are also going to be added along with the meeting recordings if you have selected that option or recorded the meeting when it was taking place. So you're going to want to come up with a plan of how you want to organize these. 
one option that I would recommend doing is renaming this blank page documents and then dragging any documents into a sub page for that section. So this will keep all of your documents nice and tidy. Then for these weekly meetings, I would recommend taking the recording and dragging that under as a sub page as well. So now everything that was shared in that specific meeting is going to be accessible from down here. If you wanted to, you could also add the SWOT analysis to that section, but it just depends on you know, how you want to be able to locate those documents and what works best for you in the future. If you don't want this documents page here, then we can simply select the ellipses and then go and delete. Now for this template, I recommend minimizing this and then now we can simply drag this underneath and that is going to remain at the bottom of your workspace. So this is just how I would recommend organizing your workspace. Just know after each meeting, you're going to have to edit this and adjust it as you need. If you don't do anything, then everything will just fall in in the order that it was added. Now from these meeting notes, you're going to notice that we can't update the name of this meeting here, but we have a timestamp, which I think is a great feature. And once again, we can see that date at the top. Now, if you wanted to adjust the name on this left navigation, you can select the ellipses and then go rename and style and you can update the name here. Now, another thing about these meeting notes is that we can also easily access the recap. We have the recording. It will also show you the speakers down here and then the documents that were shared as well as a link to an Excel attendance file. And here we can see that AI summary. So because I have a 365 Copilot license, Copilot has automatically taken notes on this meeting as well as suggested some follow up tasks. And then we can go back to those meeting notes and we can add that information here. Also on that Teams recap, we have access to those notes here. So this is going to embed that loop page that we were just working on as well as show you some mentions and that transcript from the recording. Another thing that I find helpful about this recap is from this top little left drop down, as your meeting moves along and you have more occurrences, you can easily toggle between your different meetings to access all of those recap details. Next, I want to show you how Mike has been notified about that task being assigned. Depending on his email preferences, he might also receive an email notification, but in the Teams activity feed, he will see that I have assigned him a task. We have that final meeting review. Now at the top here, this is going to be the plan name. So to get back to all of those tasks that have been assigned from that meeting, we can simply select the name. And you'll notice that that plan name actually includes the date. So each meeting that you have, is going to have that specific date stamped on it. Now, because I only had one task assigned, we only see that one here. But if I had added other tasks to other team members or more tasks for Mike, then he will be able to view those here. These tasks also sync with Microsoft To Do. And to get back to that loop page, Mike can simply select the drop down and open up the file within Loop. I have done a whole other tutorial on how you can use Microsoft Planner as well as to do, including a comparison. And I will be sure to link that at the end of the video. And then next meeting, what I would recommend doing is opening up that loop workspace and navigating to the previous meeting notes. And for that first agenda item as the previous meeting review, I would head on down to these follow up tasks and make sure that everything is complete. And then we can move on with the rest of the agenda and start to plan out our new items. Moving along, if you want to edit the meeting series, then we can expand a meeting, open up the details, and then at the top here, you'll see edit series. So now when we scroll on down to those meeting notes, you'll see that we're viewing the meeting notes for this series. So when we go and update the agenda, then this will now update on all of your future meeting occurrences. Back in Loop, we will notice how that meeting template agenda has also updated. And for more tips on using Microsoft Loop, then you can check out my playlist here or this video 
comparing planner and to-do for your task management. 